Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about international ranking, about investor ranking. It's a very hot topic in Kazakhstan and uh, in many parts of the world. And today we have a guest, uh, Professor Jan Sadlik, who is the president of IREC Observatory of uh, Academic Ranking. And he's former director of UNESCO European Center for Higher Education. And I believe he is uh, one of the leading experts in Europe on international ranking and university ranking. Welcome to our uh, interview. Thank you very much for this invitation. Um, the question which is asked in Kazakhstan, why rankings, is not, as you rightly pointed out, is not only here, but in many countries, in many universities. Well, I think that uh, the ranking, which particularly international one, are fairly new phenomenon uh, with regard to way how we perceive, how we collect, how we disseminate information about higher education is directly related, and this is not only my opinion, with the phenomenon which we know now as globalization. Universities are uh, interacting, not as in the previous, uh, within the academic disciplines, but as, in, as the whole institutions. The number of institutions has increased substantially, number of students has increased substantially, number of students moving from one university to another university has also increased substantially. The place of higher education has also been confirmed in the context of economic development. It is not just, an, uh, uh, just a term, but uh, higher education in its combination of teaching institution and research institution is one of the engines of the present day economy, particularly that one in its form based on innovation and knowledge. So um, higher education is uh, now closer to a variety of stakeholders. And uh, this is, uh, it means that on the one hand we have, uh, can be proud of it, but on the other hand, it is a demand for the specific information. Uh, and in this regard, rankings are filling up a certain asymmetry with regard to what's going on in uh, higher education from the specific point of view, from the performance. And, and rankings are in a way, uh, are sometimes in a quite brutal way, because they put that the one is better than another one, is providing this information. You know, recently I heard, uh, I heard about uh, like universities, mm -hmm. like a, a very nice quote. Today universities, like uh, many universities around the world, like uh, ladies in a uh, fashion show. Mm -hmm. Sometimes fashion comes, sometimes fashion go, and you know, they try to change clothes, try to be like fashionable mm -hmm. for specific uh, region, for specific country, or specific like policy. What do you think? Ranking, is it just fashion which will say today and tomorrow, and then we will change the clothes? Or is it something which is here mm -hmm. to stay and we, we, we actually will actually uh, will impact higher education for many years to go? May I use another uh, comparison? We just uh, mentioned that it's the fashion. So maybe it's the uh, rankings of uh, kind of the fashionable event. May I use the, as, um, to explain my argument uh, just the event which took place in Almaty and just finished a few days ago, which was the Universal of the Winter Student Winter Olympic Games. And one of the disciplines is the ski jumping. Okay, in ski jumping, you know, there are two things which the judges are uh, looking at. One, which is the physical distance yeah, of the jumper, and the second, what they evaluate is also a style. So you have a combination in ranking in which is based on the primary data, which means the hardcore data, how many publications, how many international students, how many visiting professors. So this is this, how to say, hard part. And then there is a soft part, which is reputation. Okay, so now is a question how much you put on the hard side, yeah? and we have a ranking known as the Shanghai ranking where they use only primary data, and you have the ranking like QS or Times or some national rankings in which the part which is style okay, is, uh, can be between 40 up to 60%. So 
I think that this is, uh, this is just uh, to use this, uh, um, uh, this kind of the, uh, allegoric description of it. Uh, uh, I perceive the ranking, and actually I have arguments behind it, that is more like ski jumping than just a fashion show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and another question. Another quote, by the way, yes. coming from UN and from UNESCO. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, all this saying, uh, think globally and uh, act locally. That's right. So let's go to local actors, to Kazakh National University, uh, Al-Farabi Kazakh National University. So it's actually, it's a university, national university, which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, works in specific environment of Kazakhstan, specific environment of Almaty city. So what about the ranking? Ranking, uh -huh. is it helpful for university to become better, to, to introduce quality and maybe some standards, or is it, you know, something what is, again, fashionable and uh, it might help to raise international knowledge about university, but it cannot impact uh, uh, quality of education? Well, maybe I am slightly biased, you know, as the president of the organization, which is an association of um, ranking agencies, those so-called rankers, but, as well, but also of the universities which are interested in this phenomenon of ranking and uh, Kaza, and Farabi Kazakh National University is one of their members, I would say even quite an active one. Um, I uh, would say that why rankings or the certain rankings might be of relevance for um, university which is if, uh, confirmed also as, uh, as the best university in this country, but also which is aspiring to be um, present on the international level, why ranking can be helpful. First of all, rankings is a little bit like a mirror. If you look at the, uh, the certain um, indicators which are used in the construction of the ranking, you can uh, look at yourself, you can use it as a, as a reference point where you are in uh, self-assessment and you know this is uh, uh, self-assessment is a part of the uh, of any improvement process you have to look into where you are in order to find out where you are uh, where is your strengths where is your your, your weaknesses and and if you look at the ranking of the your competitors those who are most successful why they are most successful and rankings provide this information but what I would also say it's not only a, a ranking is the only is a tool it's not the response to all the um, weaknesses or indication of all the strengths I would say that there is no university in the world which is highly performing in all the things you know I can say that Harvard is a, which is referred to as a kind of the top, top, top of the top. There are also some weaknesses in the inside of, the, of this institution. There are certain areas in which there is uh, uh, structural weaknesses. And you can have the uh, reverse situation in which there is not, as a whole institution, not well particularly well performing. You will have a highly performant, highly performant academic or, or, which is also uh, important to point out the certain areas you know, the certain this is why we have institutional rankings but more and more institutional rankings are accompanied with so-called by subject areas so you, you know does and because um, for example uh, Al-Farabi does not have a medical school at least until now so it would already in this in the institutional ranking it is a certain disadvantage of it you know? And all Kazakh universities, and this is uh, a certain structural weakness of the system, inherited system, in which the universities are fairly specialized. So it's not comprehensive. And this weakness is, is, comes out also in the context of ranking. So now it's a matter of the, of the country's policy, whether we will promote the uh, merger of the institutions, and there are such examples, Finland, went in this direction, France is going in this direction, and some other countries are promoting, sometimes using the policy of uh, carrot and stick, uh, in order to have a little bit more comprehensive uh, um, standing of the, of the, of the uh, performance of the institution, and uh, in this way also to be a little bit in a better position in the, in, in, in the international rankings. And now I know that you spent a couple of weeks here in Kazakhstan helping to launch like, a very specific uh, nationwide ranking system. 
can you say a few words about it and uh, what kind of future will be it for, for this uh, in, in new actually concept and a very quite innovative idea for the country? Well, I was here invited as a, as an expert on it. Uh, um, it is um, in the context of the uh, collaborative agreement between IREG Observatory and the National Academy on Higher Education. So we are not, the IREG is not formally part of the, of the ranking, it should not be, uh, but we are sharing with, uh, with this new initiative all our knowledge how uh, the rankings should be uh, constructed. So how much, uh, how important is the, the methodological aspect, uh, which areas, uh, uh, what I had retained from this ranking, which is, uh, uh, which should be uh, in its final format, uh, perceived not as one more institutional ranking, uh, because it doesn't make much sense, but to have a slightly different um, uh, policy orientation, which is, as we have in, the, in, in Kazakhstan, now the major strategic documents for the development of the whole country, starting with the strategy 2050, 2030, 2020 for more precise one. So if it's how the institutions of Kazakhstan are um, actually contributing to the implementation of this mega strategy policy agenda. So there will be certain areas, as usual, teaching, research, human resources, but also the the, the, the dimension which is the role of the university in the community, role in the promotion of the social transformation, so that's we usually like to call it so-called third mission. So this is, the, the, this is the, uh, our conversations with the team which is uh, uh, working on the more specific items. This is how uh, um, the value added of this, of this particular ranking. Of course, you know, as it is, the, the, dev the devil is in the details and it will be, it's not easy. Now uh, everyone knows that to uh, do the credible ranking is, uh, you, can, you, you have to have uh, access to good data, working on the data. I'm very pleased to say that it was, um, we had just recently a, a seminar in which the first um, presentation of, of this particular ranking was from the group which is in charge of it and uh, uh, the, it was received positively. So uh, they know very well that in order to have um, successful ranking you know um, to look alliances with the universities because uh, not collaboration is not uh, it, it, to put it bluntly, you can't do it against the universities. You have to do it with universities. It's very interesting. So basically, what we know and well, what we learn from you, it's uh, you know, it's the, the big picture. It's a big story, and ranking it becomes mm -hmm. important in all parts of the world. And probably university already start like international like race for for better ranking for better position. In the in the glo global uni uh, educational universe, mm. and it probably will here to stay. I, s I uh, see. I, I I subscribe to it. That's mm. the you, you know all the let's the brief history of uh, um, ranking is quite dynamic one. There was there were um, initiatives to boycott, for example, you know, because there's certain uh, certain uh, persons or certain institutions felt that they mm, for the justify or unjustified reasons, the ranking is not for them. Even the whole countries were sometimes very resistant to, uh, to embarking on ranking. The uh, life has proven that there is a value added of rankings. You know, they have to meet a certain standards and my organization, IREG Observatory, is promoting those standards with our so-called Berlin principles. We have also the procedures of the, of, for the audit of rankings. We also have uh, guidelines how to use the rankings to warn the users what rankings, not only what they say, but what rankings cannot say. Therefore, please don't uh, blame the rankings for all the ills. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's very easy, you know, we in Europe like to 
particularly in the European Union, we like to say when there's something not good, we say there's a Brussels as the, with the headquarters of the European Commission to be blamed. It's a whipping boy kind of the approach, and rankings can be, can be because there's this very mm, uh, rigid format of uh, presentation, particularly in the first 100. Because, uh, you know, in some rankings, uh, when you reach in the lower tiers, you don't longer go into um, ordinal uh, presentation. You go into groups in, in small like rating than rankings in itself. So, Thank you very much indeed. And my final question. You know, universities around Kazakhstan have aspiration to enter, well, just now you mentioned, top 200, top mm -hmm. 100. A very briefly, very short, like maybe three like uh, bullet points. What should they do to improve their ranking and to climb uh, maybe to top 200 and uh, to, to, to top 100? This is what my, my suggestion would be, but you know, sometimes it's, the, it's it easy to give an advice, especially if you don't have to apply it yourself, you know. It's, uh, but I definitely, um, if I look at the mm, closer, you know, if you're like an onion, you open open a little bit and you see where are the causes. You know, one of the, the, the first thing is the academics um, have to learn how to publish. You know, that's uh, number one. Number one. You know, this is this, uh, particularly uh, how to publish uh, or to publish at all, where to publish. Mm -hmm. yeah, so then we go into something which is again mm, a challenge because uh, if you look at the Mm, number of journals in the world uh, which are caught by the major bibliometrics databases, Scopus, is almost 30,000 referred journals. 30,000 journals. And if you look at the, how many on that list are Kazakh highly cited journals? It's only two journals. So you see the, the country which is from the point of view of the research it's definitely more performant than you would you look at only by the number of journals, highly cited journals. But the disadvantage of it is that those journals are in English. So English, like in the Middle Ages, became a lingua franca of the present day research. So it's, it's a, number two point. So number two is the, is the, but I also have to say, you know, my, it's not the first time uh, when I'm uh, in Kazakhstan or in Al Farabi, actually I was, when I was director of uh, uh, UNESCO, the uh, European Center for Higher Education and directly involved in the Bologna process just after independence uh, of Kazakhstan I had a serious discussions with the minister uh, of the challenging task of the Kazakhstan to join the Bologna process and uh, you know the Kazakh uh, politicians were smart enough to seize an opportunity so the other countries which were more or less in the same position after a breakup of the Soviet Union, they could aspire uh, to become the members of the um, Bologna process. They didn't seize this opportunity. So Kazakhstan uh, was wise enough enough. But uh, coming, continue your uh, answer to your question. The number first point number three. Uh, number three uh, to increase in internationalization, mm -hmm. um, inside and outside, inside to in, to bring the people from outside to be visiting professors, uh, to, um, to participate in the team research, and outside to be present. Uh, you have to, you, it's, 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 it's getting crowded uh, in uh, various grimias, but to be present, you, this way you have an opportunity to demonstrate what you are doing. So, so it's, it's internationalization is two facets, one which is inside, this is also evaluated because you, by bringing uh, people from outside, you have a different perspective. You, you are obliged to uh, provide courses in English, which is again, is a, but I, when I said uh, this, this is not the first time when I'm here, and I see there's also something, I can say this openly because I'm part of this generation, there's a generational change. Uh, if you look at the, if I look at my students in the, when I was teaching for the first time, and my uh, present day students, it's already, you know, they, 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 are, uh, they are very different. They have uh, uh, experience of being outside. Uh, they are exposed and they are quite uh, much easier operate in this cyberspace. 
for them the, all those tools which are new tools for, for us, they are natural tools for them. So I think that this is, this is just a matter of patience, continuity, support and uh, and the third one, which is also saying that uh, the certain universities, and I think that this denomination national university is important, is that the certain group of universities need a little bit more of the um, breathing space much larger. And they, they have to find out what it would be the best for them, to, how to uh, uh, run. Because there are the universities which are, have a more orientation toward the local need, uh, will have probably the different model of governance, different financing model than the university which have to compete on the international level. Thank you very much indeed. I believe it was a wonderful discussion about mm. uh, international you. ranking and the implication of international ranking in the case of Kazakhstan. And let me quote you, uh, ranking is here to stay, so I hope to see you here. <laughs> <laughs> it would <laughs> be a pleasure. <laughs> uh, many times and I hope Thank to you. see you next time in this studio and we'll talk more about international ranking. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was uh, a we pleasure. Had Jan Sadlik. He is the president of IREC International uh, uh, Academic Ranking, uh, and he uh, his base is in New Paris. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.